Okay, another day, another electronics assignment. Uh, TRNS4, common emitter amplifier, blows an image of the simple amplifier design in class. Build the circuit shown on the redboard in Tinkercad. You'll need a function generator, power supply, oscilloscope, and various resistors and capacitors, and of course, a transistor. Set the amplitude of the source to 0 0.01 volts because 5 millivolts is what you get from a microphone. What we want this circuit to do is amplify the signal voltage 100 times so that it can drive a speaker. We're currently driving the circuit 50 hertz below the 3D breakpoint. Boost the frequency to 2000 hertz and send the output voltage to a multimeter. Why not an oscilloscope? I wanted to use the scope again here, but it just wasn't responding well to the circuit. Okay. Once the multimeter stabilizes, you should get a reading of about 4.6 volts, nearly 100 times larger. Okay, make it neat and when you're finished. Submit it. Okay, let's see the circuit here. All right, the common emitter amplifier. I'm going to do like I usually do and start here on the left and work my way to the right. In Tinkercad, I've already set up a bit to make the video shorter. So here I have my uh, source, my function generator, and I've set it to 2000 hertz with an amplitude of 0 0.01 because that's what was in the destruction in the in, in the destructions in the instructions. I've also set the DC offset here to zero. It doesn't particularly matter, but it's going to make it easier for me to see that the um, voltage has been increased a hundred times. So I've hooked my function generator into the positive negative here on my breadboard. I also have a power supply, which is 20 volts, because I see at the top of my circuit there's a 20 volt uh, supply is needed. So I've got this power supply set to 20 volt 20 volts. And I've got it plugged in here, positive and negative, down at the bottom. You'll see that I've already distributed a bunch of resistors. And in particular, right here, I've already created the voltage divider that I need for this circuit. So we'll see that in just a second. So here I go, off to the races. I've got my source, 2000 hertz, with an amplitude of 0 0.01. That's what I start with. And then I need to go from there from a 600 ohm resistor. On this circuit, I'm challenging myself to use as few wires as possible. So instead of using wires to connect things around the board here, I'm just going to take this 600 ohm resistor. You see the resistance there is 600 ohms. I'm going to take it directly from the positive onto the board without using any wires at all. Whenever possible, I'm going to try to do that. And the next thing that comes along is this 0.33 micro farad capacitor. So I'm going to go over here. I already have one set up, capacitance of 0.33 micro farads. I'm going to take that and plug that into the board but again, I'm not going to use any wires. I'm just going to uh, connect right where the resistor is connected. That'll all be connected together along that column. And then uh, on terminal two here, this is where I'll get, uh, I'll go off the resistor, which, or the capacitor, which goes off the capacitor to the middle of my voltage divider. Now here, the voltage divider is not dividing the voltage evenly. I've got 220K on the top and 20K on the bottom. Uh, so that I get just the right amount of voltage going into the base of the transistor to switch it on. So I have a 220K and a 20K, and you'll see how I've set it up in my Tinkercad here. To the high voltage right there, it's plus here. That is my 200... Why is it not reading the resistor? Should it show me the resistor value. There it is. 220 kilo ohms is that one. And that one is connected to a 20 kilo ohm that then goes to ground. So these three rows here are the center of my voltage divider. I can connect anywhere there to be the center of the voltage divider, and that's great because I want this uh, capacitor to go to the center of the voltage divider, and so I can do it with one wire just like that. Then uh, from there, I'm going from the center of the voltage divider into the base of my transistor. So I need to get my transistor into the game here. So where am I going to put it? Um, I think I'm going to put it here uh, because, well, let's look. I think I've already done some setup here. I've got a 2K to ground coming out of the emitter. Uh, and so I'm going to place my transistor here because I've already done a bit of work here. So let's see what happens. I'm going to go from the uh, center of my voltage divider and I'm going to go to the base right there, and I see that's labeled base, so there I am. And these two resistors I have already carefully 
uh, placed. Let's see what they're all about. I have a 20K resistor that goes from the collector of the transistor to the 20 volts. So here's the collector and here's the 20 volts positive and connecting them I have a show me the resistance. I wonder why it's doing that. Funny little behavior. There we go. It's a 20k resistor going from the collector to the positive voltage. I also have a 2k resistor going from the emitter to ground. So here's the emitter, is this column here, and here's my resistance, which is a 2K resistor, which you see is going to the negative row on the breadboard here, which is ground. So all I have to do now is get this uh, extra bit here on the end, which is 150 ohm resistor that goes through C2, uh, which is a 20 micro farad capacitor, to ground. And that comes out of the emitter. So from the emitter as well, I'm going to go through this resistor, which is a little struggle, 150 ohm resistor. And then from that 150 ohm resistor, I have to go through a capacitor. And here's this 20 microfarad capacitor I've already selected and, and set the value on. And then from there, I go to ground. And so I've used, you see, I've used very little connecting wires to do this. We're just cleverly using the... Um, the connections of the breadboard in order to do the maximum uh, um, to get the maximum efficiency out of the board because the more uh, little individual wires I add the more resistance I add to the circuit and the let worse my performance is going to be also these wires are going to create magnetic fields and such that are going to interfere with the behavior of things so making the neatest most compact circuit that I can is really an advantage so now I could turn this on and start the simulation, but I wouldn't really be reading anything uh, because I don't, I'm not reading my output. The output on this uh, common emitter amplifier is actually right here between the collector and the collector resistor, the 20K resistor. So I have to locate that on my circuit board. It's right here. Either one of these two holes is where I want to plug my meter in. Well, my meter here is this multimeter, which is currently set to measure voltage, which I think it is by default. And I'm going to take this lead from the multimeter, and I'm going to run it over here and plug it in at the collector so I can read the voltage between the collector resistor and the collector at any instant in time. And that's going to be my output voltage. I tried to use the oscilloscope for this so I could see the amplified signal, but the oscilloscope just wasn't having it. Uh, and I don't know why. It's a problem with the simulation. Uh, but I'm gonna. I can start my simulation now because I think I've got it built up right. And so what I see here um, <clears throat> is uh, two kilohertz, which is two thousand hertz on my signal generator, and five millivolts uh, here on the voltage. And my voltage is climbing, but climbing slowly. And the reason why is that these capacitors need to fully charge before this thing is going to behave properly. Uh, and so I'm gonna have to wait for this to get all the way up to twenty before I see the behavior. And I'm already halfway there, but I'm not halfway to my goal voltage. So I'm a little <clears throat> concerned about what's going on there. Five millivolts is my source, and I'm already up to, oh, here we go. Up she goes. Excellent. So this voltage is coming up, and I make it all the way to 7.4 volts. I'm actually getting greater amplification here. I'm greater, getting greater than 100 times. Last time I bought this circuit, I got, uh, whoa, I got slightly less. I got 4.6 something last time I built it. Now I've got 7.4 volts, so I've actually got amplification above um, the required amplification. Maybe that has something to do with how efficiently I built my circuit. No matter what, I've got this thing built right because I'm getting the amplification that I want. Now I can screenshot it and turn it in for my grade.